We are at uh, Revelation chapter 5. Chapter 5. And, uh, yeah, I was uh, watching the news and I was watching that lady in Kentucky and she took that stand. Mm. And um, I, I, I was praying for her as well, you know, just to tell her, to ask the Lord just to encourage her. You know, when we were reading and it, and it said that um, when we were reading through the churches, and the Lord said that He knows how some of you are standing, y'all, right at the, at the at the seat of Satan or at the mm. synagogue of Satan. Mm. And He also said to to one of the churches that Satan will throw some of y'all into prison. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what that is. Yeah. You know, the Lord is uh, uh, doesn't change. What she is doing is right. Mm -hmm. But the society that we live in now, now that the whole nation as a rule has said, and this was done by the Supreme Court. This wasn't done by the vote of the people. No. It was done by the Supreme Court. And it's not a a ruling uh, that the masses have, have, it's a ruling of leadership. But then that's been the problem all along. When Jesus came, the people were looking for, for, for light, but the leaders were blind. Mm -hmm. And they were teaching things that cause people to remain and to stay blind and um, you know and then Jesus had to tell them he told those Pharisees he told them, you guys are blind leaders of the blind and you both want to fall in the ditch and he also told them that um, you are murderers and liars and he said that you he said you are of your father the devil mm -hmm. and he was a murderer and a liar from the, from the beginning so this is just the beginning of stuff I think we're going to see things like this or more, and uh, there's a lot of support for this lady, but they don't show any of that support. Oh no, they don't want us on they TV. Because I've been waiting for them to put on there, like, because when you work for the government and you get fired, like outright fired for mm -hmm. doing wrong, and you it's blatant wrong according to the system, you lose your pension. Mm -hmm. See, like I had worked for the government. Right. If I got fired from the government, say, for stealing, mm. then I don't only just lose my job, I lose my pension, I right. lose everything. Yep. So now this lady has lost everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've been, I've been looking to see if they're going to set up some type of thing where people could send her something to help her. To help her out, yeah. You know, because she do have to live, yeah. you know, and I know that God is going to use his people to bless her. Yeah. Because the enemy ain't going to bless her. Right. But they want to make her an example, yep. you know, and so we as Christians, we have to really stick together and pray and for pray. her and, right. and do what's right. And, you know, and then the thing, I was quoting what Jesus had said unto the churches in relation to some of the things that we see that this woman is going through. And sometimes you got to read every word. Jesus also said, be thou faithful unto death. Mm -hmm. He said that to, to, the, to the churches as well. And so you got to be able to stand regardless. Mm. And, um, you know, so, uh, but what we have to remember is that no matter which path she's going to have to go or anyone is going to have to go, the Lord is there. Oh, yeah. Right? And so, um, and that this life is only temporary anyway. You can't, it's, it's what the scripture says, if you if you strive and seek to save your life, you lose it. Lose it right. but, but what you'll lose is not so much your natural life, but you lose your eternal life, right. your spiritual life. And so uh, even if she's thrown in prison and, and if it costs her her life on this earth, it don't really um, equate to what she's going to gain in eternity. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, God may say, I'm not going to allow her to go through but so much anyway and mm -hmm. step in in this uh, present reality, in this mm -hmm. uh, uh, natural world. So either way, we just have to hang on in there. And that's sometimes a hard lesson. And I think that's where sometimes people, uh, they, they, they get scared of the struggle. And I think we all do because we're all human. Yeah, right. And we all feel like, you know, we want to be able to keep what we work for and all that. But the reality of it, it's all going to going to burn up anyway. The, everything here. I keep telling people, it's all, you know, we have all this stuff. And we thank God. I thank God for it every day. You mm -hmm. know, thank God that I have a place. But eventually, they are going to take what we have yep. according to Scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, so 
we just have to, we have nothing else right. but, but to trust God. Trust God. You just have to maintain yeah. and, and look and try to do what you can to, to, you know, to be thankful and to have what you have. But at the same time, recognize that, uh, that we're pilgrims. Our true home is in, the, in, in eternity. And that's where our, our true dwelling is. And we have to recognize that that's our true citizenship. And that's a, that's a, a thing that, that comes with real trusting and understanding uh, of the word and what God is doing for us. Um, and we'll see some more of that uh, as we continue to go through this. All right. Uh, let's look at what we're dealing with today. <laughs> Um, we're going to go uh, pretty much get right on into the scripture here. Uh, once again, we are in Revelation. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which the Lord is reveal revealing unto John to give to the churches. Um, and in this letter, um, he has instructed us of the things that are, the things that, mm. uh, things that he saw, the things that are, and the things that shall be. And uh, he told him, he said that this is a prophecy in that first verse, he's in, 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 in the first chapter, in the third verse, he said this is, this, these are the words of prophecy. He said that these things are, are, uh, are going to be fulfilled. The Lord also told John to write these things down. Uh, the Lord also uh, 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 gave John information and then John said that he was in the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and now in the fourth verse, for, sorry, the fourth chapter, yeah. last week we saw that John was, was not only in the spirit, but he was caught up in heaven. So, it, and it represents the aspect of from the perspective of the church, the church is no longer at this point on earth. Mm -hmm. At this point in the future pro prophetic understanding of this, of, of this letter, of this, of this uh, of, of revelation, the church has been moved to heaven. So John's perspective now is from a heavenly perspective. And so we saw that in, ver in chapter 4, and we're going to see that again uh, uh, as we go through chapter 5. So let's go ahead and take a quick listen to John chapter 5. Let me get this queued up here. Chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. When he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. All right. So, what do we see here in chapter 5? We are seeing in heaven that there is an aspect of worship. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. We are seeing worship in chapter 5. And um, this is actually a beautiful chapter. It's one of those chapters when you look at it and you see the, um, the understanding of what it is that, that not only humans are seeing, but what are we seeing as, as individuals? And uh, this is for KK from Sister Penny. And so what are we seeing as individuals? Um, and um, John, as, a, as an individual, is seeing not only man, but he's seeing all creatures. And this is something that we uh, oftentimes are going to have to get used to. That People ask the question, we're in Revelation chapter 5. Um, is, 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 are, are human beings the only things that God has created? And the answer to that is no. no. And when we get to heaven, and now John is in heaven, remember now, he was caught up last, last week in chapter 4, he was caught up in heaven. And how was he caught up? In the what? In the spirit. So therefore, John is seeing spiritual reality. Now, we open up this fifth chapter. And look at what he saw. And one of the beautiful things about uh, the, the scripture here is when you see, and we finish with chapter 4. Remember, chapter 4 says that he saw a door open up in heaven. And he heard the trumpet that said, come up hither. Right? It says that immediately he was in the spirit. And then he said he was in heaven. Right? So when chapter 5 starts off, chapter 5 starts off, what's the first word in chapter 5? And. And so that's a what? A connective, a continuous. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm still in that same vein. I'm still doing this, right? So he says, and I saw uh, in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written therein upon the backside and sealed with seven seals. Now, what is in this book? This is the this book here is uh that this scroll that he sees is one of the most important documents, I, I, would, I would say as far as earth is concerned, it is the most important document there is. The Bible is definitely, a, 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 the scriptures that God has given is a, an important document. And this that John is looking at is also an extremely important document. What do we know? Okay, the first thing that we see here is it, it was in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Now remember, when John got there, we saw that in the, first, in the fourth chapter. He got there, he saw, he saw what, was, what he perceived as, the, uh, as God, and he saw uh, uh, a, person, uh, a, a personage sitting there that looked like emeralds, and it had the rainbow about him, and he was over, over the uh, sea of crystal, uh, as clear as glass. And uh, he had the four and, and, uh, and twenty elders around him, and the and the and the beast that had the the uh, appearances of a of a, of a lion and of an ox and of a man and of an eagle. All these images of individuals. So it's not just human beings, men, women, boys, and girls. You're gonna see these in, these these. Uh, entities that are different than man. Now, what we're going to also see as we get into this fifth chapter is that we're going to see these entities worshiping God. Um, you, you look at, uh, you know, look look at a cat. You know what a cat looks like. You look at a dog. Do they worship God? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But according to chapter 5 here, that when we get into heaven, we will be able to understand how all things that God has created worships him. You remember when Jesus uh, came in uh, to Jerusalem on that week where uh, he, he int basically introduced his ministry publicly, and we, we celebrate that as what? Palm Sunday. Sunday. And then they was yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, the, you know, the king and so forth. And uh, when the, the Pharisees, the leaders of Jesus' day, who were corrupt, went to Jesus and said, you see what these people are saying 
how they're worshiping you, mm -hmm. you should make them be quiet and not worship you. And Jesus said, yeah. if they were to stop, what would happen? The rocks would cry. The very rocks would begin to cry out because what had to be fulfilled? Scripture. Scripture. And the scripture said that when he came in, that he was going to be worshipped and he was going to be praised. Mm -hmm. Now, we look at that and we go, so what does that mean? I, I can't comprehend what that means. I don't, I, I don't, I've never had a conversation with a rock. I don't, I don't understand that, that, that. But it does say something, that there is more to what, to reality. And that means, because when it's all said and done, who created the rocks? God. And he created all things. So in its own way, how would that rock actually do what Jesus said would happen if the people decided not to worship him? I don't to do it. I would they would have to how would they do it? I don't know. I don't know. know. I don't I know. Don't have to do it if he said it. <laughs> so when we see here in chapter five, we're gonna get a a continuous glimpse that there is worship on all levels, and man is being redeemed back to that parade of worship. We've left the parade because of what? sin but the remainder of God's creation is still part of that they're still going through that they're still experiencing that but because they did wrong they had to what they had to leave all right it's kind of like if uh, if you on a kickball team let's say Xavier you're playing kickball right and you're on the team and and you y'all just taking your turn it's getting getting up but now if you fall down and, and hurt yourself say so you, you know you hurt your knee and you can't play kickball anymore what happens? You have to sit down and watch, and you're watching everybody else go. But until you get better, and once you get better, what's going to happen? Then you can get back into the lineup. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. The human, we, we were part of that whole team that, that God has created, that does the things that God had. And we got injured. We got hurt. And, and, and that, that, that injury is called sin. And now we've been sidelined. You know, for all this time, and we're about to be redeemed and brought back to the team. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so we get a glimpse as to what's going on and some of the stuff. And, be, and believe me, this is just a small understanding. We, we, even though we're looking at this and we're looking at it through the revelation of, of Jesus Christ that when He's unveiling it, but I, because we're still in this natural body, we still are seen through a glass. What darkly we we know a part and we testify a part. So we're not seeing it all, but we do get a chance to see some of this. And this is really beautiful when you look at it. All right. So he sees in his hand, in his right hand of him that sat on the throne, which is God, a book written within and on the backside. So that means it's written on what? On both, both sides. Side. All right. And who has the book in his hand? God the Father. That was him who sat on the what? On the yeah. throne. And I saw a strong angel. What kind of angel? Strong. Well, if there's, that means that there are, if there's a strong angel, if there was something about this angel that made him stand out from what? From the other angels, where he just seemed to be stronger than your what? Your average angel. So you say, well, what does that mean? I don't know. I just, John said this angel was strong. Because he could have just said, I saw a what? An angel. But instead he said, I saw a strong angel. All right, so it's important to understand that there's something unique about this angel where he gets that uh, uh, word strong put before uh, his description. Proclaim with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals therein. All right, so in this book is the payment, because the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Death. All right, and the gift of God is eternal, eternal life. life. So it is time for this exchange to be made it's like when you're in the grocery store and you're picking up all your groceries you can pick them all up you know you go you get your get your get your cornflakes and your rice and your and your and your, and your, and your, your bread and your eggs and your milk and you get all that stuff put in the cart but then it comes a time of what payment, payment. of payment you got to exchange you can take these goods out but you got to make a payment and if you don't have the payment so if you ring up a grocery bill of you know, of five hundred dollars, and you reach in your pocket, and you got you know five dollars. The bill is five hundred, and you got five dollars. What's going to happen? You 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 ain't, you're not worthy to pay for it. So there is a scroll in the hand of the Father, and this scroll costs. We're going to make the payment. We're going to now pay the bill 
for earth. Earth's bill has come what? Has come due. And, we, and we're ready to make, and once we make the payment, and what they realize is we're here. We done did all the shopping. We've done everything that we need. We got everything in the, and now let's just, just let's pay the bill and we're on our way. Mm -hmm. And so the angel is saying, he said, who is worthy? In other words, who's got enough money to pay this bill? Who has done enough? Who is worthy to open this book and loose the seals thereon? Because within those seals, remember the wages of sin is what? Yeah. That, that payment is within it. This is this, and as we go through this, you're gonna see it's not gonna be one of those more more pleasurable experiences, but that has to take place. Verse three. Uh, and, and the key is worthy. So you, you you underline that word worthy. So you go to verse 3. It says, And no man in heaven or in earth, neither under the earth. And when, you, when it says under the earth, there's a whole lot we can say about that mm -hmm. when it comes down to uh, those that are in, the, um, in, in, in Abraham's bosom, which they call paradise, or in uh, a, a, the spiritual abode of Tartarus. Or, 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 or the, um, or, or hell, or Hades, the, or the abyss, all those different places. So even under the earth. So no man in heaven, on the earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, nor to even look thereupon. Did not only had enough clout to, to open it, couldn't even look at it. Right. They couldn't even look at it. And sometimes you have these stores that say, look, if you don't have enough money, you don't even come to my store. You can't even come and look. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to look for, for jewels and gems and, you know, you want to go out and buy you one of them, you know, y'all that got all that money, you can go buy one of them Rolexes and, and you know, one of them big old fat diamond rings. And some of these stores, they don't need you. They're they, they going to look at you and be like, I'm, I don't know you, so you don't need to come in here. They, they won't even let you come in and look. And those are real, those real high-end stores, you know. <laughs> so they don't want you in there just, just you know, meddling around. They want you in there. They know you mean business, mm -hmm. all right. So what this, this, this angel said uh, uh, when he asked, "Is anyone worthy?" And John said that there was no one worthy, not even to open it, but it wasn't even worthy to look upon. Mm -hmm. Verse four. And I wept much because John was like, wow, we got, we done all this work on earth. We have all these prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. We watched with David and, and, and Esther and Ruth. And we saw uh, Moses come. Moses was the lawgiver, mm -hmm. but he, but he also, Moses is also a, a lawbreaker. Mm -hmm. Even though Moses gave the law, he's a lawbreaker. He couldn't open it. David mm -hmm. couldn't open it. Nobody could open it. He's looking at all these 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 in, these entities in heaven. This what about this strong angel that said, "Is anybody worthy?" He's not even worthy. No, nobody's worthy. And he says, "And I wept much because no man was found." And that's the key. Also, when you read the book of Ruth, it talks it talks about the the kinsman redeemer. And see, the thing about paying the bill for man was it also, it had to be a what? A man to pay the bill. Mm -hmm. Which is why Jesus had to come in the flesh. He had, to become, he had to come as a man. So he could be the kinsman redeemer. Just how, that's why that whole story of Ruth, how Ruth was able, when, when her husband died, he was able, she was able to marry Boaz, and she became the, the great, grand, great great grandmother of King David because of the kinsman's redeemer's law that was given to Moses. See, all of these things that were given to Moses was a foreshadowing of what we see taking place now. Boaz was um, whose cousin or whatever? Boaz was the grand grandfather, great grandfather of King David. King David. Mm -hmm. So they found it was. He said he wept much because no one was able to look at it, uh, neither uh, to even read it. Verse five, and one of the elders. Uh, said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion. And you you might want to underline that word lion in just a bit. Because I'll show you why in a minute. The lion 
of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have what prevailed to open the book and to loose the, the seven seals thereon. So he said that this lion, and who is this lion? Who is Jesus. he? He's Jesus. That's Jesus Christ. And how is Jesus described? As a what? A lion. As a lion. All right. In other words, he's described as a conqueror, as strong. Mm -hmm. Even though that angel was strong, this is, this is Jesus. He's even stronger. So saw him as a what? As a lion. All right. And this is how John saw him. And, and remember, how is John looking? He's in looking the in the spirit. That's key. Because in the spirit, when he looked at Jesus, he saw Jesus. It, it, he, looked like a, he looked like a lion. And he said, well, how can that be? I don't know how, how it can be. I just know that's what John said that the Lord looked like. He looked like the lion of the tribe of Judah. He said, the lion has prevailed. All right, and this is how the, I should say this is how the angel described it. Then John looked, he said in verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne. Where was he at? In the midst of the throne of who? Of God the Father. So he was what? He, he was in the midst of the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He says, I came out of the Father. Me and the Father are what? Are one. All right, so it said, in the midst of the throne, and of the four and twenty, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a what? A lion. Wait a minute. I thought he said he was a lion. He did. Now he looks at him and he's a what? A lion. He looks like a lamb. And why does he look like a lamb? Because he's slain. Because he's slain. He was put to death. He was our sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I saw a, mm -hmm. he st uh, uh, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at a lamb that looked like it's been, what? It's, it's been butchered. Mm -hmm. S had been slain, having seven horns. <laughs> that means, uh, that horns represents power. Mm -hmm. And seven meant complete or, 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 or just perfected. So in other words, he has perfect power, seven horns, and seven eyes. Eyes represents perception, the ability, the ability to understand and to see and to, and to know what's going on. So he has perfect understanding, perfect perception. Now, so he's looking at a lamb, but the lamb has these horns on it, mm -hmm. seven, and these eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Right? Because those eyes, which are, they says are like are the seven spirits of God. God is what? Able to see all things. There is nothing hidden from the Lord. Nothing. So this neither lamb in the earth or under the earth. Say again? He said, neither in the earth or under the earth. Nor under the earth, exactly. So this lamb with this with the seven horns, all all, all authority and all perception, the ability to see all things. And to redeem all all individuals, those the circumstances, the situations of everybody, and the fact that, that this lamb has seven eyes w w lets you know God sees what's going on. He's not blind to it. He's not. He knows what's happening. He knows the difficulty. He knows. He knows about the lady in Kentucky. Amen. He's taking that stand. He's, he 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 knows what's going on. He sees it. She goes. I don't want to give out a, ma a marriage license with my name on it to two to two individuals of the same sex. That's not how God. They designed it, and she's just not going to do it. Now they done threw her in prison. God ain't shocked. Mm -hmm. God knows what's going on, oh, yeah. and God's with her. Amen. And when God wants to, if God wants to open a door for her to get out, guess what? She's going to get out. Mm -hmm. But if God wants her to go through it, go she's going to go through it. And Jesus told the church when he when we're reading in um, chapters two and three, "Be thou faithful, what, unto death." Bless you. Bless you. I got all this uh, dust and hay fever today. I don't know. So, bear with me for my sniffles here. All right. So, verse 7. And it says, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Mm. <laughs> so, he took the book from the, the, the son, took the book from the what? From the father. All right. And. The fact that he had authority allowed him to be able to do it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, verse eight. 
It says, and when he had taken the book, excuse me, I'm going to have to take a moment here and clear my sinuses. Excuse me. You see, I got my uh, tissues and my garbage bag right here. We're all here with you. Same thing going on over here. Excuse me. I'm going to get you for hours. All right. All right. Excuse me for that uh, hay fever time out there. All right. So, verse 8. It says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, now, when we look at this, the moment they recognized that Jesus was able and had enough clout to pay the bill of the, of the sins of mankind, Jesus paid the bill. All right, and once he was able to pay this bill, there was this rejoicing going on. And this is a, this is a, 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 a beautiful aspect of the worship that we that we are seeing here in this um, in this fifth chapter. In, in this fifth chapter, and like I said, this is really a a wonderful aspect of the worship that we see. They are so glad. That Jesus is able to pay this bill. Mm. All right. So they're looking at this and they're saying, uh, when, when verse eight, when he had taken the book, the four beasts. Remember, we saw the four beasts. Mm -hmm. They were happy. Mm -hmm. They were redeemed. Now, the, the four beasts are not are not described as human beings. All right. And then the four and twenty elders, which we believe are part of, are more than likely human beings, are redeemed. Uh, uh, people from the church they fell down before the lamb they're just thankful the bill is we know the bill was paid because Jesus said father give me the body that was prepared for me before the what foundations of the earth mm -hmm. so we know that Jesus was going but the actual we knew he had the clout he had the money but the actual exchange here's the bill the bill's been paid now give me the give me the groceries give me the merchandise give me what 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 belongs to me and that's like the he received the deed to planet earth Mm. You know, the mortgage is paid in full. And so, you know, like sometimes when people have, uh, when they pay off their mortgage, they have a, a mortgage burning ceremony. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is, is kind of like that. They're just like, okay, it's been paid now, complete. And now we can go in about redeeming, complete redeeming, and, and, uh, and the punishment of sin. All right? Uh, and and uh, every... Uh, having every one of them harps, so they had harps. So you hear that sometimes you hear, well, you know, we have uh, pictures of angels in heaven playing on what harps. Well, this is where people get that image from. But here it says that who had the harps? That the four and twenty elders. So that would be like the people that are, were, were that are caught up in the rapture, or the church. All right. So we're gonna have a harp. We'll have something. So what is those? Is, is it an actual real harp? I think it's some kind of musical uh, um, um, you know, something. And uh, we'll be able to utilize that to, to worship. And golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. So what this says is the prayers of the saints are, 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 are never lost. They're, they're stored, they're, they're, they're maintained, and, they, and every prayer is given its proper attention. All the prayers are right there. And that's one thing that goes right to heaven. Prayers, it enters right in, right in. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you, know you, can, you can block off things and everything, but there's, there's certain things like air, it just, just comes in, or water. What if, 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 if there's a crack anywhere, guess what? Water's going to get in. Mm -hmm. Prayers are even better than that. Prayers just go through everything mm -hmm. and anything. You know, it's kind of like radio signals and TV signals. You, you can block off everything here and you can still, you know, get a radio or TV signal. You can still listen to the radio because the radio, it just comes through the walls. Mm -hmm. Prayers are even greater than that. 
Because you can put some kind of lead walls up and real sickness can't go through that. Mm. Prayers go through everything. Mm -hmm. And they get right to God. And we can see they're right here. They're not lost. All right? And that's why it's important to pray. We may not see all, uh, understand all the work and the power that prayer does. But prayer goes right to God. And, and we should always remember that. Look at verse 9. And they sung a new song. They sung. Now last week I, I, I last week I made Lauren cry. She was <laughs> listening to me sing and just started crying. She's like, Elder, you really can't sing, can you? I was like, no, I don't I can't carry a tune. And she laughed so hard she started crying. Tears was coming down her eyes. <laughs> I said, Well, look at that. I said, But you know what? When you get to heaven, you're gonna be able to carry a tune. So yeah, you come 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 check me out there. You know? <laughs> And they, and they sung a new song, sing. And look at what they're singing. They're not just singing, you know, I feel like a hound dog. They're not going to be singing that kind of song. They ain't going to be singing none of that kind of stuff. Look, They're going to sing stuff that's real. Look at what they're saying. Singing, saying, thou art worthy to take the book. They're, they're saying this in the song. And open the seals thereof. All right. He was worthy to take the book and to open it. For thou was what? Slain. And thou has redeemed who? Us. us. So that's how come we know it's the church. Alright. He's redeemed us. To God. Redeemed us to God. Brought us back to the parade of all those that are in heaven. Worshipping God. By thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue. And people and nation. God. Uh, the, the Lord Jesus died for the entire what? The entire world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That who, he that believeth in him may not die, but shall have uh, everlasting life. All right, verse 10. And has made us unto our God king. So in other words, he's saying, now not only did he redeem us, but he also has given us what? Some authority. Mm -hmm. He's made us kings. That means that we're going to have uh, authority or rulership over certain areas and priests we're going to be individuals that will help reveal the goodness and the, and the greatness of God that's what a priest is supposed to be to show to help them to help an individual see the wonder and the, and the power and the glory of God all right and we shall reign on the earth all right, so we're going to heaven when we get raptured, but we're gonna come back to earth because where's the new Jerusalem when we get down to chapter 20? We're gonna see new Jerusalem coming from heaven to where to earth, to earth. and we're going to dwell in that new Jerusalem. New Jerusalem, so everybody talking about well, we're gonna be in, in heaven forever. We, we will be in the spiritual realm forever, and heaven is in the spiritual realm. But the spiritual realm is going to be incorporated within the, the greatness of what earth will be when God not only redeems man, but he's also going to redeem what? This planet. Yes, and then the new Jerusalem is going to come down from heaven into earth, or onto earth. And we're going to see that, and we're going to dwell therein. Amen. All right? So we're going to reign. Uh, we're, we're going to have uh, opportunities to be both in heaven and in the new earth. Look at verse 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels, so these are angels, round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. So we got the angels, the beasts, and the, and the elders. All right? So these are the people that were there and the elders always represent the, uh, a remnant or a portion of the church. So this is part of, we're part of this now. All right? And the number of them uh, was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. What does that mean? It was a whole lot of individuals. A whole lot. All right? And so they were all there and look at what, 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 what they were doing. So in verse 12 it said, saying, so they didn't say singing now, they said what? Saying. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain mm. to receive power and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. All right. So, all of these um, 
individuals are talking about this lamb that was what? Slain. They're, they're just rejoicing that God has, that Jesus has paid that bill. Alright? Because he was slain. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. And Jesus paid that bill. He paid, he died. Alright? Alright, so we see that those were um, uh, just, uh, just a lot of people. Thousands of, ten thousands and thousands and thousands. Alright? Verse 13, we continue with the worship. We're still worshiping, all right? And what is all this worship connected to? The fact that somebody is able to pay the bill, and that somebody was who? Jesus. Jesus. And look at how heaven is re is reacting, and because we all know that He died, we all know. So now the exchange and all this wonderful glory is happening, all right? Look at this. Thirteen, and every creature. So now it just says before it was saying. I heard the elders and the and the four and twenty elders, elders, the beasts, the four uh, beasts that were before the throne. Uh, that was in verse eleven. Now in verse thirteen, it says, "And every mm. creature." So now it ain't even trying to just name a couple of groups. It's saying what? Every, every creature which is in heaven and on the earth. So every creature that's in heaven mm -hmm. and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them mm. heard I say now, now this is with everything all of God creations said this and look at the look at the words and it's slight difference between what they're saying here and what they said before blessing and what and honor, honor and Amen. glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Alright. Now, what's missing out of the words that they were saying here for every creature? Because now every creature is saying this. It, they left out one thing. They left out any connection to the Lamb being what? Slain. Slain. So, not everybody can sing about them being, what, redeemed. Mm. But they can sing about the Lamb and about the, the glory of God. All right? Um, if, 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 if somebody has an inheritance and, um, and they leave an inheritance to, to a group of people, the people that receive the inheritance can say, I'm happy that I received the money. Mm -hmm. Now, we can say I'm happy for them and their situation, and but we didn't receive the money, so we can't say I'm happy mm -hmm. that I received the money. So not everything in in that that God has created in all of the the the, the eons of all the existence and the the universe has sinned. All right. We do know that Satan sinned. Mm -hmm. We do know that man has sinned. Mm -hmm. But but there are other stuff that didn't sin. But they're just happy. They don't have a aspect of well, redeem me back. They've always been there. Mm -hmm. So when everything is re is is singing, they don't have to sing about redemption. They just can sing about how great God is. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see here. They're fine. When everybody decides to sing. Because they say, I, we all want to join into this. Well, we all just going to come together and talk about how great God is. And so they said, he receives blessing and honor and glory and power unto him that sitteth on the throne uh, and to the Lamb forever and ever. All right? So, uh, once again, we're just continuing the worship. All right? Now, verse 14. And the four beasts said... Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. All right. And that uh, that brings to the end of that fifth chapter. Now, we're actually going to stop there. We're not going to pick up any more. But what we're going to see when we open up in this uh, sixth chapter 
as it we're going to begin to see the we're going the Lord's going to open what he purchased mm -hmm. and what that means is that he's going to allow the the judgment to come upon this earth because once again the wages of sin yeah. all right now if you don't accept the death of Jesus Christ then you're going to have to you're going to die yourself because you got to pay that bill now Jesus paid it for us and you should accept it what we're going to see is God's reminding the earth and he's going to tell we're go you're talking about seeing unique things you know when Jesus said um, that um, uh, when they asked him when will the end be and, he, and one of the, the, the answers he gave and when the gospel shall be preached into what all, all the earth, earth then shall the end be now the church to a certain degree a lot of evangelists and different ones have taken that on as their responsibility and we're going to go into all the earth and that's not going to happen by the church the church is not going to go into all the earth the the, the the church is going into a lot of the places, and there are a lot of places where the, uh, the gospel is preached more so than, than, than has been previously. But that responsibility is Jesus's. He's going to make sure the gospel goes to all the earth. So he's going to seal 144,000 Jewish people, and they're going to go preach. He's also going to send angels, and the angels are going to fly around the earth preaching the gospel. To, to, to all nations we're going to see that all of that's going to happen when we go through this book when, as these seals begin to open the question is going to be then how can anybody just not just say Jesus is real and just believe him because this light is going to be given the, 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 we're going to see also that the scripture is going to say that I saw heaven roll back. And so people are going to be able to, to see what spiritual stuff looks like. Because heaven's going to be rolled back. And from the earth, you're going to be able to look out and not just see the stars. Not just see the moon and the sun. But you're going to be able to see things of heaven. Now, you say, well, what does that mean? I don't know. But you'll be able to look up. And when people do look up and see that, the first thing they're going to say was hide us from the from the wrath of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that on next week as well. But when, if, if God was to open up the, the door so that the natural people could see the spiritual realities, you would think that they would just go, okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna believe it now. But it goes to show you it has a lot to do with what you've allowed yourself to become. See, you could take the sunlight and you put, uh, you put a, a, a lump of clay, and you could put a, a block of, uh, of of ice or snow. And, and what happens to the to the clay? It's hard. So it it's hard. And what happens to the snow? It melts. it melts. Two different reactions to the same light. It depends on what you have allowed yourself to what to become. You remember when uh, the Bible talked about Pharaoh, how he what, hardened, hardened his heart? His heart. Well, it wasn't because, and it says that God hardened his heart. Mm -hmm. His heart. Well, it wasn't that God said, I'm not going to let you believe. But God said, I locked you into what you are. Mm -hmm. and, and you're going to react naturally to what you are, to the light I give. And for Pharaoh, it was to become what? Hard. But we need to be able to just melt in the presence of the Lord. That's why you see the the, 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 the 420 elders. Every time something happens, what they do? They just oh. falling down. They just you saw that happen to Isaiah. Mm -hmm. You gonna see this with John. John just gonna he go, I can't take it anymore. He just you just oh. he just falls down before the presence of the Lord. It just melts you. Uh and, and, and you become you, you can't really hold your, your your comprehension as to how great and wonderful God is. All right. But you can get hard and just stand up there like you, you know, just as, uh, I'm just as tough as you. No, you're not. And in Psalms 2, the Bible says that God's going to laugh because what's going to happen when they see the, the heavens roll back and they see all this and then all the questions as to whether there is a God and what, 
all that's going to be done away with. But then that's when all this training that I believe, and this is, this is Wayne speaking, that has happened where they have trained us through movies and books and magazines and TV shows that when this great entity, this great power comes from, from beyond saying this earth is mine and I come back to, to, to reclaim it, we need to get our forces together and unite as a, as a, as a planet and we need to fight against them. And that's what's going to happen. Now, how many movies have we seen like that? You know, Independence Day, Armageddon, mm-hmm. you know, uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. All these movies that, that have this portrayal that something is coming from beyond our realm, either from outer space or from another dimension. And, and we as a world need to unite and fight against it. Well, I think that is just not coincidence that we see all of that happening. It's just to help train the psyche of man that when you see this happen, this is the stand you should take. And unfortunately, a lot of people are going to take that stand. As opposed to just saying, God, I surrender to you. I believe you. I accept you. Now, the Bible also says that there will come a great multitude out of the great tribulation that will believe. But what gets me is, how come they all don't? See, there's going to be a lot of people are going to believe. The Bible said there's going to be a great, there's going to be a number coming out of the great tribulation that no man can number. So there will be people that are going to believe. But why won't everybody believe? That's the, but it has a lot to do with what? What you're made out of. What you've allowed yourself to become. Right. And we saw that in, uh, with uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot's wife. Even though Lot got and his wife got taken out of Sodom, still uh, what was in Lot's wife is what she turned into. She, she just turned hard. The Bible says she turned into a, what, a pillow of salt. Um, she just could not uh, allow herself to, to, to leave that. She just didn't want to leave. She was still, you know, intrigued with that, that world behind. When we get to heaven, it, you know, I, I don't think anybody's going to be like, oh, I, I, I miss my backyard, or I'm, you know, I, miss, I miss those old trucks I used to drive in. And you ain't going to be saying that. No, I'm, I, I miss that paint I used to slap on the walls. No, we're we, we going to be like, thank God, thank God. You know, we're not going to be longing for the good old days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ain't gonna be known in that nostalgia. It'll be a nostalgia in the sense that we thank God that he redeemed us from all that stuff. Mm. And we'll be able to see stuff as it is. And um, it's just gonna be good. So that's chapter five, the chapter of worship, where you see worship in heaven. And it, we saw it, that in heaven, everything worships God. Okay. Everything. There's not a there's not a thing out there that does not worship God. And you go everything. 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 The turtles. Everything. Somehow or another, the rocks and the, the trees. I don't know. Well, how is that? I don't know. I don't know, brother. I know he said everything worships God, and we see that, and we're going to continue to see that. All right. Any other comments or questions?